So this is Mary Jo Bang, one of the most wonderful poets America has to offer. And she's going to read uh, Bill's translation of Rainer Maria Rilke. And I'm going to read five poems uh, in the original. Six translations will follow. And we'll just um, go from here to there. And then I'm going to introduce uh, the, two, the, the two other readers of uh, this evening. It's not going to take too long. Just listen and enjoy. Herbst. Die Blätter fallen, fallen wie von weit, als welkten in den Himmeln ferne Gärten. Sie fallen mit verneinender Gebärde, und in den Nächten fällt die schwere Erde aus allen Sternen in die Einsamkeit. Wir alle fallen, diese Hand da fällt, und sieh dir andere an, es ist in allen, und doch ist einer, welcher dieses Fallen unendlich sanft in seinen Händen hält. Autumn. The leaves are falling, falling from far away, as though a distant garden died above us. They fall, fall with a denial in their wave. And through the night the hard earth falls, farther than the stars in solitude. We're all falling. Here, this hand falls. And see, there goes another. It's in all of us. And yet there's one who's gently holding hands. Let this falling fall and never land. Paris, September 11, 1902. Selbstbildnis aus dem Jahre 1906. Des alten, lange, adligen Geschlechtes, feststehendes im Augenbogenbau. Im Blicke noch der Kindheit Angst und Blau und Demut da und dort, nicht eines Knechtes, doch eines Dienenden und einer Frau. Der Mund als Mund gemacht, groß und genau, nicht überredend, aber ein gerechtes, aussagendes. Die Stirne ohne Schlechtes und gern im Schatten stiller Niederschau. Das als Zusammenhang erst nur geahnt, noch nie im Leiden oder im Gelingen, zusammengefasst zu dauerndem Durchdringen, doch so, als wäre mit zerstreuten Dingen von fern ein ernstes, wirkliches geplant. Self-Portrait from the year 1906. The distinction of an old, long, noble race in the heavy arches of the eyebrows, in the blue eyes, childhood's anxious, shy look still, not a waiter's servility, yet feminine, as one who endures. The mouth made as a mouth is, wide and straight, not persuasive, yet not unwilling to speak out, if required. A not inferior forehead, still most comfortable when bent, shading the self. This as a countenance, scarcely configured, never in either suffering or elation brought together for a real achievement yet as if from far away out of scattered things a serious and enduring work were being planned paris spring 1906 die spitze teil 2 und wenn uns eines tages dieses tun und was an uns geschieht, gering erschiene, und uns so fremd, als ob es nicht verdiene, dass wir so mühsam aus den Kinderschuhen um seinetwillen wachsen, ob die Bahn vergilbter Spitze, diese dichtgefügte, blumige Spitzenbahn, da nicht genügte, uns hier zu halten? Sie, sie ward getan. Ein Leben ward vielleicht verschmäht, wer weiß, ein Glück war da und wurde hingegeben, und endlich wurde doch um jeden Preis dies Ding daraus nicht leichter als das Leben und doch vollendet und so schön, als sei es nicht mehr zu früh zu lächeln und zu schweben. The Lace 2 And if one day all we do and suffer done should seem suddenly trivial and strange, as though it were no longer clear, why we should have kicked off our childhood shoes for such things. 
Would not this length of yellowed lace, this densely woven swatch of linen flowers, be enough to hold us here? See, this much was accomplished. A life, perhaps, was made too little of, who knows? A happiness in hand let slip, yet despite this, for each loss there appeared in its place this spun-out thing, no lighter than a life, and yet perfect, and so beautiful that all our so be it's were no longer too early, smiled at, and held in abeyance. Capri, circa February 10th, 1907. Oh. The next poem is uh, Marionettentheater, which is a dialogue with Kleist's famous essay, and we are going to hear this only in the English translation. Puppet Theater. Behind bars, like beasts, they pile up their behavior. Their voice is not theirs, though they swing their arms and swords with great variety, as if catching an outcry to copy while on the wing. Their limbs have no joints and hang awkwardly in their rig of wires, which doesn't prevent them from killing or dancing or bowing and scraping like a courtier to a king. With them, memory has no point. They wring their awareness dry, and all they retain inside them, they generally employ to beat upon their breast till it's unable to resist. They know all the breasts are beaten so. Their large and formal faces are there for all to see, simpler than ours, more forceful and ideal, open as eyes seem when awakening from a dream, a sight which makes laughter rise from the pit like steam. For those on the benches see how the puppets pound, wound, and frighten one another, and collapse in loose heaps dead of their exertions. If anyone were to understand it differently and fail to laugh at their consternations, the puppets would replace their play to reenact a last judgment day. They would yank on their wires to pull before the painted porch the hands that hidden high above had danced them into their desires, hands hideously red, gloved no longer, and they would pour from every door and climb those wires and cardboard walls and set their former land of fire and assassinate those hands. Paris, July 20, 1907. The next to last poem is a fragment from a fairly long poem, which uh, Bill chose for this reading, and it's called Requiem für eine Freundin. Geschrieben am 31. Oktober, 1. und 2. November 1908 in Paris. Ich habe Tote und ich ließ sie hin und war erstaunt, sie so getrost zu sehen, so rasch zu Haus im Todsein, so gerecht, so anders als ihr Ruf. Nur du, du kehrst zurück, du streifst mich, du gehst um, du willst an etwas stoßen, dass es klingt von dir und dich verrät. O, oh, nimm mir nicht, was ich langsam erlern, ich habe recht, du irrst, wenn du gerührt zu irgendeinem Ding ein Heimweh hast. Wir wandeln dieses um, es ist nicht hier, wir spiegeln es herein aus unserem Sein, sobald wir es erkennen, ich glaubte dich viel weiter. Requiem for a friend, Paula Modersohn Becker. I've had my dead, and I let them go, and was surprised to see them so consoled, so soon at home in being dead, so right, so unlike their reputation. Only you, you come back, brush by me, move about, bump into something that will betray your presence with a sound. Oh, don't take from me what I'm slowly learning. You're mistaken if you feel homesick, for anything here. We alter all of it. Whatever we perceive is instantly reflected from ourselves and is no longer there. And our last poem for this evening from Bill's River translations is Achaia Torso Apollos, the famous sonnet. Achaia Torso Apollos, 
Wir kannten nicht sein unerhörtes Haupt, darin die Augenäpfel reiften, aber sein Torso glüht noch wie ein Kandelaber, in dem sein Schauen nur zurückgeschraubt, sich hält und glänzt. Sonst könnte nicht der, Bu der Bug der Brust dich blenden und im leisen Drehen der Lenden könnt nicht ein Lächeln gehen zu jener Mitte, die die Zeugung trug. Sonst stünde dieser Stein entstellt und kurz unter der Schultern durchsichtigem Sturz und flimmerte nicht so wie Raubtierfälle und bräche nicht aus allen seinen Rändern aus wie ein Stern, denn da ist keine Stelle, die dich nicht sieht. Du musst dein Leben ändern. <lacht> Torso of an archaic Apollo. Never will we know his legendary head, where the eyes, apples, slowly ripened, yet his torso glows as if his look were set above it in suspended globes that shed a street's light down. Otherwise the surging breast would not thus blind you, nor through the soft turn of the loins Could you feel his smile pass easily into the bright groins where the genitals yearned? Otherwise, this stone would not be so complete, from its shoulder showering body into absent feet, or seem as sleek and ripe as the pelt of a beast. Nor would that gaze be gathered up by every surface to burst out blazing like a star, for there's no place that does not see you. You must change your life. Paris, early summer, 1908. Thank you.